Uh, and now uh, it's uh, uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, the next speaker, uh, Jacob uh, Chengwei Feng, uh, who is a PhD candidate at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, majoring in theological studies. Jacob will address the topic, no distinction between contemplating the created realities and contemplating the one God, the earliest Chinese natural theology and its Syriac roots. The floor is yours, Jacob. Thank you so much, Doro, uh, for hosting this session. And thank you, Lisa. Uh, we're in the same time zone. Uh, it's good to uh, share the same session with you. And I uh, thank you for your is inspiring paper. And uh, I also have some questions, but uh, I don't want to take the time for the uh, uh, for all uh, the members are here. Uh, and uh, before I present my uh, paper, uh, let me just do a quick uh, uh, introduction. Um, I was born and raised uh, in mainland China as an atheist. <laughs> and uh, I came to the U United States uh, for my PhD study uh, in uh, physics um, almost 30 years ago. And, uh, uh, and then uh, on campus, uh, I uh, met some Christians who shared the gospel to me and then I became a Christian. Uh, I'm the first Christian in my family. And now all my Christ uh, family members became Christians. And uh, many of them are still in mainland China. And uh, so um, uh, it's really amazing opportunity, which I treasure to share my uh, part of my dissertation uh, process uh, with all of you uh, uh, amazing scholars in Australia, New Zealand, and uh, from the rest of the world. Uh, again, um, so uh, this is the topic uh, of my paper and uh, um, uh, I will sh I'll, I'll try to um, keep myself within the time frame and um, uh, give enough time for uh, for you uh, to. Uh, I, I would really love to engage with you uh, uh, if you have questions and um, suggestions. Um, first, a quick in introduction. Um, in the past uh, uh, few decades, uh, there is a um, renewed interest in the Church of the East, um, studying not just uh, historically. Uh, but also theologically. And uh, in the um, church history, uh, many scholars have realized that the Church of the East has been uh, unfairly marginalized um, until the past few decades. And um, um, uh, the, uh, I mean, of course, they declared itself independent from the state church uh, of the um, uh, Roman Empire at around uh, 424. And they were uh, unfairly labeled as Nestorianism. And uh, so uh, a lot more and more scholars are realizing that that is the wrong symbol of the Church of the East. Uh, and uh, very briefly, uh, this is about the Middle Ages around 13, 14th century. Uh, the um, Church of the East uh, and its largest extent uh, with 27 archdioceses, which much larger than the Roman Catholic Church, uh, which span all the way from the Middle East to uh, Far East, in, including China. So uh, that uh, uh, so more and more church historians and uh, theolo theologians are realizing the uh, significance of uh, this um, church uh, in the church history, and uh, it's because my PhD dissertation is on Jingjiao. Uh, actually, it's uh, established by the missionaries of the Church of the East um, who came to uh, China in the seventh century. Uh, the uh, missionary Alo Alopen, or Alopen uh, led a missionary team uh, to uh, China and they were well, warmly welcomed by the Tang officials and the Tang emperor. So, uh, uh, they were, uh, they remain unknown to the rest of the world until the 17th century uh, when the uh, Jingjiao steel was unearthed. And, uh, uh, and then uh, this steel was established in 781, but then uh, buried uh, in or after 845 because um, uh, the uh, later, uh, the late uh, Tang Dynasty uh, emperors decided to persecute the um, uh, the uh, Buddhist, and uh, at that time, many people mistook uh, the Jingjiao as a 
part of the Buddhist <laughs> um, religion. And then uh, not just the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Jingjia, but also the two other Persian religions, uh, the so-called the three Persian religions were also persecuted. And uh, the, uh, because of that, this steel was, entered, uh, was uh, buried and which uh, did not, uh, was not uh, um, discovered until much later, almost a thousand years later, uh, which uh, upon the uh, rediscovery, uh, it shocked uh, the uh, Christian world because uh, many uh, scholars think that this value of the uh, Jingjia steel can be compared to the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> and uh, so today I want to talk about the uh, natural theology of the Jingjia. Um, and I want to use uh, the quotation mark around the natural theology because natural theology was a much later phenomenon as I want to avoid the uh, an anachronistic uh, era. Um, again, first, uh, the natural theology, I want to uh, uh, pimp, uh, point out that the, uh, to talk about natural theology, it is imperative to define nature. And then Veli uh, uh, a uh, systematic the uh, theologian, uh, also professor here in Fuller Theological Seminary, um, in, in his five volume constructive theology, uh, gave a very uh, wonderful um, uh, survey of the Western understanding of nature. Um, so basically he argues that the modernist construction of nature as autonomous and the postmodern deconstruction of its rational basis are both mistaken. And I want to uh, second his thought, but uh, also complement his thought by the Chinese or Eastern understanding of nature. Uh, the Chinese philosopher Zhang Danian uh, surveys the historical development of the concept of ziran, uh, and uh, so uh, in the current uh, postmodern, um, uh, actually since modernity, uh, the word uh, ziran uh, was uh, uh, equal was uh, um, considered uh, equal uh, to the Western concept of nature by the Japanese scholars, uh, who borrowed this Chinese uh, phrase. And then their uh, understanding was uh, borrowed, what was brought back to Chinese culture uh, since modernity. Uh, and then uh, philosopher Zhang Danyin concludes that for most of the time in ancient China, uh, this phrase ziran uh, refers to a uh, quote, that which is naturally so or spontaneously so. Um, so that means that um, uh, there is a similarity between the ancient Chinese view of nature and that of modernity, uh, modernity in the West sense, in that first, uh, both insist on the nature as an autonomous entity, and second, both reject the idea of God as first cause. Uh, this uh, idea mainly uh, was um, uh, founded by uh, Lao Tzu, the founder of the Taoism. Um, so basically he proposes that the uh, uh, consideration of nature as something autonomous uh, rejects uh, the idea of God. Um, so uh, now um, uh, comes to the uh, Jinjiao's natural theology, which, which again should be uh, surrounded by uh, parentheses. Uh, on the left is the um, Chinese uh, paragraph from uh, one of the seven um, genu uh, generally accepted authentic Jingjia uh, documents of the Tang dynasty uh, called the Discourse of the One God. So on the right is the uh, translation, which uh, reads the 10,000 things reveal the one God. All 10,000 things having been created by the one God, namely all having been created that are uh, visible. And there is no distinction between contemplating the created realities and contemplating the one God, which is the title of my uh, presentation. And from this, one understands that it is God who made all 10,000 things, both what is visible and what is, what is invisible are uh, created by God. And uh, uh, of course, I um, want to uh, argue that uh, the uh, uh, document called the Discourse on the One God uh, was considered by the scholars to be one of the uh, earliest works uh, among the Jingjiao classics in Chinese. 
and also that uh, one that carries the most theological weight, end of quote. Uh, in uh, this uh, document called the Discourse on the One God, uh, one finds the earliest version of what we now know as, quote, natural theology in Chinese, uh, if we adopt its earliest form in Latin, namely Theologia Naturalis, which could arguably be translated as either a natural theology or a theology of nature. Uh, the term was coined uh, in pre-Christian classical world to describe a general mode of reasoning which descended from the natural world to the world of gods. And for classic Greek philosophers, natural theology was often framed in terms of rational or scientific quest for an archie, a first principle. In contrast to the pre-Socratic uh, tradition, which showed little interest in developing arguments in support of the existence of the gods, the author of this course appears to Wan Wu, uh, the 10,000 things, uh, and the sustenance of heaven without the need of pillars and walls and earth to argue for the existence uh, of God and power of one God. And uh, uh, the manifestation of God through creation uh, is expounded here uh, in, uh, um, in this uh, red, um, uh, in this uh, phrases with red font. Uh, and then here, a scholar, Wang Lanping, a Chinese scholar, surmises that the Jingjia author most likely draws his insight from uh, New, New Testament Romans uh, chapter one, verses 19 to 21. Uh, and I argue that even more probably, the quote natural theology in discourse can be traced to its early theoriac uh, church fathers. Uh, the no distinction statement here, quoted here, corresponds to early church father uh, Ephraim, uh, its grand conception of the harmony between God and all the orders of creation, based on which one understands Ephraim's poetical theological method beyond his use of types, symbols, and even sacramental mysteries. God has filled uh, creation with his traces and has given humans the mind and the faculty of language that can appreciate these pointers, express them, and follow them by the light of the gift of faith. So here uh, I uh, argue the, uh, the continuity with the Church of the East uh, in the Greek learning. Again, uh, this is another quotation from the same document, the Discourse on the One God. So heaven does not have pillars to support it. If the One God did not support it, how could it have stayed in place so long without collapsing? Uh, you might find it hilarious and uh, simple, maybe naive, but to remember this document was written almost a, <laughs> a thousand years ago. And this is only possible thanks to the power of the one God whose ways are mysterious. If it were not the one God who acted, uh, who could sustain heaven to keep it from collapsing. Um, so uh, from here, um, I suggest that the, um, the 10,000 things in the universe uh, have been uh, uh, proposed by the Jingjia authors that uh, those uh, 10,000 things, all things in the universe have been uh, in Chinese anzhi or set or placed or set in a stable course indicating the orderliness of God's creation. And then the concept of the world as an ordered whole that is a, as a cosmos was used by the Ionian philosophers to develop a natural theology according to which such an orderly world was at least to some degree transparent to the human intellect. Uh, Pyth uh, Pythagoras is often credited with being, uh, quote, the first to call the containing of all things the cosmos because of the order which governs it, end of quote. So the Greek term uh, cosmos thus developed overtones of order and intelligibility. The universe is something that we can understand however, partially and imperfectly. Uh, Jing Jiao's connection with Greek thought can be traced to the ancestors, namely the believers of the Church of the East, uh, who were known as inheritors of the Greek culture. Uh, so from uh, this paragraph, uh, Todd Godwin observed that Aristotle's and moved mover concept is present in this message. It is known that during the seventh and eighth centuries, a Greco-Roman scientific text 
a thought was spreading into Tibet and Central Asia, and in a milieu in which uh, Iranians and Iranian Christians were doing missionary work. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume that the appearance of Aristotelian metaphysical notions within the apologetics of the Church of the East in the Tang China uh, stems from this larger development. Uh, with, the, uh, with the last few minutes, I want to present the significance of Jingjiao's quote, quote, natural theology. Um, Jingjiao's natural theology contributes significantly to Chinese culture, to Chinese culture in general and Chinese theology in particular. Uh, first, the ancient Chinese culture did not develop a monotheistic religious faith. Uh, scholar Kuang uh, uh, Zhiren traces the religious activities of the Chinese people in the early Qin dynasty, which is the first uh, united dynasty in uh, Chinese history. By studying the ancient Chinese classic, such as the Shu Jing and Shi Jing, uh, Kuang asserts that the people of the Yin and Shang dynasties practiced polytheistic faith to whom Shang Di or the Supreme God is the highest authority of humans and the natural world. Although the other classic uh, called Shang Shu per personifies Shang Di uh, who have emotions such as fondness, anger, and mercy. The concept was later mixed with the metaphysical concept of Tian Dao or heavenly mandate uh, in the Western Zhou Dan Dynasty, which is uh, from uh, 1046 BC, BCE to 771 BCE, producing a kind of monotheistic religion, which was later inherited by the philosopher Mo Zi, uh, whose date is from 648 BC to 376 BC. Uh, however, such a trend was interrupted by Confucianism, which replaced re religious faith with a humanistic spirit. Therefore, the concept of one God was never fully developed uh, in ancient China. Therefore, the Church of the East missionaries are the first and the earliest who introduced to the Chinese people uh, who practiced polytheistic faith uh, the concept of one God by resorting to things of nature, such as the mechanism uh, of the uh, uh, universe or the heaven. This is epoch making, I argue, in the Chinese religious history and meaningful for theology, science, and religion, trilogue, which is the main argument in my dissertation uh, theology, science, and religion, trilogue. And second, uh, the Church of the East uh, missionaries brought with them the Greek thought of cosmos with an inherent understanding of nature's otherness and intelligibility. Uh, even though uh, ancient Chinese culture does not understand nature uh, inherently. They noted a philosopher of religion, Richard uh, Swinburne, identifies the importance of observable order within the natural world as follows, and I quote, regularities of succession are all per pervasive. For simple laws govern almost all succession of events. In books of physics, chemistry, and biology, we can learn how almost everything in the world behaves. The laws of their behavior can be set out by relatively simple formulae, which man can understand and by means of which they can successfully predict the future. The orderliness of nature to which I draw attention here is, is conformity to formula, to simple, formulable scientific laws. The orderliness of the universe in this respect is a very striking fact about it. The universe might so naturally have been chaotic, but it is not. It is very orderly. This is a, a long quotation. Elsewhere, I have, uh, in, in another paper published in EastCast, I have uh, reconstructed Jing Jiao's so-called the Chitological Theology of Creation, which is a new term uh, I coined, uh, with the, uh, the following uh, features. First, its theology of creation is, is distinctively Christian and Trinitarian. Second, it integrates the Holy Spirit with the Chinese metaphysical concept of qi, uh, or breath, or pneuma, or spirit. And third, um, I argue that they creatively uh, dance around the Chinese concept of qi to express uh, their uh, pneumatology. And, and then uh, uh, they also creatively brought their Greek understanding of cosmos and the orderly creation of God into the Chinese culture. And third, 
uh, Vedimati Karkainen argues that Christian tradition uh, has been a major catalyst in facilitating the empirical study of nature with this idea of orderliness and rationality of the created order. And this is made more interesting if we connect it to the uh, searing uh, believers' scientific and technological strategy in their bold engagement with the techno scientific Tang China, because at that time, Tang, Tang China was among one of the most advanced culture and uh, civilization in technology and science. And they were known, uh, the East theory monks were known for their medical expertise, accomplishment in astronomy and other Greek Byzantine technologies, such as bell making techniques and architectural skills. Uh, they incorporated their comprehensive scientific learning and theological uh, and uh, technological ex excuse me, expertise in their missionary endeavor, which contributed to their success at the earliest missionaries in ancient China. Thank you for your time. Wonderful, uh, Jacob. Uh, such a uh, uh, tremendous historical lesson, uh, you know, compared to uh, modern uh, missions, let's call them, or put uh, the right inverted commas, uh, where you have these colonizing uh, cultural factors that uh, go away. Sorry. That means you, you were in time. Uh, uh, we, which uh, um, uh, went everywhere and uh, leveled, uh, um, you know, the local cultures. This is a very interesting, complex approach where on the one hand, um, uh, the Syriac uh, monks uh, engaged the, 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 the local culture, but on the other hand, surreptitiously, wisely, discerningly, they, they uh, brought together with them uh, theological and cultural ideas coming from a different uh, uh, horizon. Wonderful. Um, questions, comments from the floor? Oh, can I just ask Jacob, uh, I mean, a fascinating story. Uh, in your view, what do you think are the features or characteristics of the Chinese culture that have made it so hard for Christianity or Christian ideas to penetrate? And as a, as a, as a second part, do you think that the time you were speaking about today differs from today's China or do the same features apply <laughs> thank you uh and uh, uh and to news thank you uh, for your uh, good questions um first of all um maybe um you know we are looking at things differently but uh, because uh almost every day i have uh contact with the uh, chinese christians uh right over there in mainland china and uh, yes on the one hand it, it is difficult for christian faith to penetrate but uh uh According to uh, uh, the um, uh, professor Yang Feng Gang from Purdue University, he has, he has a very optimistic <laughs> estimation of uh, the Chinese Christians. And just uh, 10 years ago, the number of Chinese Christians already exceeds that of the uh, UK Christians. So uh, it's one of the fastest growing uh, Christian body in the, in, in the world. So uh, uh, it is true that uh, I mean, for example, when I you know when I was studying Jingjiao, uh, established by the Church of the East Missionaries in China, um, their challenges are uh, um, at least a few um, fold. For example, first, um, the uh, uh, Tang China that the Church of the East Missionary set their feet on is. Uh, very much advanced scientifically and te te technologically. Uh, and secondly, it is a pluralistic uh, society and the Tang culture is one of the most um, cosmopolitan uh, dynasty in the Chinese history. That means they are very, very welcoming uh, the foreigners. Uh, so Indians, Arabs, Persians, the, uh, through the uh, ancient Silk Road have uh, amazing um, uh, traffic uh, in between the uh, east and the west. Uh, so uh, the emperor, mo many emperors <laughs> in Tang dynasties are very open-minded uh, compared to the other dynasties, despite a few emperors 
uh, who uh, want to promote Taoism as the state religion. And at, at other times, a few other emperors want to promote Buddhism. And uh, so uh, they face a pluralistic uh, society. And uh, so they have to, uh, they, 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 they're they modernized compared to Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism. And Taoism is a local religion. And also the other two, uh, the, the so-called the three person religions uh, also originated from Persia, uh, uh, not just the Church of the East, but, but also uh, Manichaeanism and uh, Zoroastrianism. So that means they were situated in a very pluralistic uh, society and also techno scientific uh, society. That's why my dissertation uh, uh, focuses on the theology, science, and religion trilogue uh, to, to uh, study and reflect how we Christians today uh, can not just survive, but even to prosper uh, uh, in this current uh, pluralistic and uh, uh, techno-scientific, I mean, when we look at ChatGPT, AI, right? Uh, those kind of uh, society that we're in. Uh, so, um, uh, and, and then today, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm in the US uh, with some of you and uh, with the so-called uh, scientific and technology war between the US and China, uh, I feel that it is imperative uh, for theology in general and for Chinese theology in particular to engage science and technology because and science uh, and also religion because uh, so far the uh, dominant uh, view uh, mentality in the Chinese science community is that uh, science religion is totally superstitious and against uh, science and uh, uh, but also on the same time, the Chinese science community uh, is um, lamenting on their uh, desperate need of creativity, um, uh, lack of creativity. So in my paper um, on Zygong last year, I argued that uh, the creativity is part of the human spirit and uh, therefore uh, Chinese theology should and ought to contribute uh, to the science, theology and religion dialogue. Uh, so maybe I'll just leave it there. Uh, hopefully that will, <laughs> uh, if you have more questions. This is great. I mean, um, uh, it's such a, an interesting paradigm to contemplate, especially uh, given our circumstances today. Kamina, do you want to add something? Or oh, come? yeah, I wanted to add something on, on the last thing that you said. Perhaps this discussion and getting the Chinese theologians involved would also help the fact that there's a rivalry between us scientists here in the US and scientists in China, where like the NIH is even cutting um, some of our collaborations. And it's there's it's not good right now because it's a, a competition that is, is, is not good. Usually that doesn't work for us. So I wonder if, yeah, a discussion, a theological discussion may also bridge us a little bit better right now. Yeah, uh, Hermina, I, I really agree with you, and thank you for your amazing insight. Um, I because uh, uh, in my paper uh, on Zygong, um, one of my uh, argument is that the uh, current Chinese theology um, is out of date um, uh, in terms of the theology and science dialogue, because uh, uh, so far the um, uh, majority of Chinese theology is um, influenced by the fundamentalism. Uh, in the early 20th century during the Republican era. And uh, at that time, the May Force movement uh, enlightened the Chinese people uh, by the Western sense of democracy and science. Uh, so um, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, Chinese theology did not uh, contribute enough uh, to the uh, dialogue uh, between theology and science and even the um, science community in the East and the West. And so um, uh, uh, elsewhere, I um, also argued that uh, the uh, theology and science, religion dialogue uh, and the theologians uh, should become the bridge, not maybe, maybe better than the bridge metaphor, we should be the Starlinks, <laughs> like, you know, the satellite by Elon Musk. Uh, to form uh, to 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 uh, establish and formulate uh, small scale and decentralized uh, conversation partners uh, between uh, science scientists and uh, theologians, 
Uh, and actually in one of the uh, uh, 30 years ago, at, at, at which time Chinese government and society is very open to Western scientists and theologians, uh, where for example, uh, the renowned uh, uh, theologian and uh, scientist Don Pokinghorn, uh, Ted Peters, uh, um, also uh, uh, Alistair McGrath, uh, whom I met uh, last year uh, in Oxford, they all, were, they all were invited to China. And uh, so it, it, it really uh, made this conversation very, very uh, interesting and influential. However, because of the politics in the past 20 years, this kind of dialogue was uh, basically disappeared. And uh, the Chinese scientific community, on the one hand, you know, as I said, laments their lack of creativity. And on the other hand, they still have a biased view towards uh, theology and uh, Christian churches and other religions in general. So I really agree with you that uh, this is kind of dialogue is, um, is a very um, urgent, uh, is in an urgent need. Thank you. I'll add one more thing, and that is that we trained most of the, the great Chinese scientists. We trained them here in the U.S., and then they have gone back. I don't know how that would change the, oh, the dialogue, but many wow. are trained here and yes. then they've gone back. So, uh, but it's I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, well, well uh, I mean, you're, you, I, I think you're, uh, you, you really know the situation. Um, among many of my daily contact with Chinese Christians. Uh, many are uh, became a Christian like myself in the West, and then they went they went back to China and became professors in the uh, universities. So I'm also uh, kind of engaged them to boldly uh, uh, engage with the uh, Chinese public square uh, from the science and theology perspective uh, that we are scientists and the and the theologians because every Christian should be a small theologian. And uh, we can contribute uh, to the so-called the creativity that is much desperately needed uh, in the Chinese science community. And we all know the um, uh, the uh, charge of uh, intellectual uh, theft, <laughs> property theft uh, from the West to uh, Chinese scientists. I mean, maybe that's a little bit uh, unfair, but uh, it, is, it, it also reflects many Chinese scientists' mentality um, in the lack of the, for the lack of creativity and innovation. Um, uh, so uh, yes, um, uh, uh, not just in theology, in theory, but also in praxis, uh, is one of my personal call from God uh, to engage the uh, Chinese uh, scientists and, and theologians to contribute to, to the public square. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, such a uh, uh, beautiful and enriching session. Thank you very much. I have learned immensely. Uh, Wonderful to uh, both of you, uh, and thank you, and thank you to uh, uh, the attendees, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, I'll be seeing at least some of you uh, on uh, for the next session in a couple of hours or so. Um, by the way, of you Americans, happy 4th of July. <laughs> thank you very much, all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone.